Hey guys, how are you doing with the lingering energies from the full moon? They're still pretty, pretty intense. Um, all these emotions coming up are really a gift. They truly are. And if we can just recognize that and get out of these stories that we want to tell based off of the feelings that are coming up inside of our bodies, not want to blame, not want to become a victim, but really take that powerful energy that's still circulating and lingering and use it to your advantage, right? Now, if you can't get out of the emotions, go bask in nature, go do rest or do whatever you have to do. Take those salt baths, whatever you have to do to ground and really get back into your, your body and, and get out of that emotional space, right? And, and that's the first step. If you can get into that place where you're not reactive, even in your thoughts, like sometimes we don't say anything, right? We don't go project because we're past that place in our emotional development, although we all project sometimes. Nobody's ever fully out of it. <laughs> but once you get past that place where you're not projecting, then you're able to uh, sometimes get caught up in your mind, right? So then it's like a process. It's like, oh, I'm not a projector as much anymore, but I'm still like in my mind stewing, being resentful or blaming or blaming life for why you are in the space you are and feeling stuck or in limbo or whatever it is. Like even in your mind, you are projecting energy and thoughts out into the field. So that's still a form of projection. So the next step is the alchemy, right? So recognition, that's the, the next thing. It's the recognition. And once you can recognize it, then you can decide you want to create a different thought pattern around it. Once you create a different thought pattern around it, maybe you're able to get into some type of inspiration because you're out of victim mode and you're starting to feel a little better about yourself, right? And use that inspired action to then uh, cultivate things in your life that are of a higher vibration. They're in a higher alignment to where you want to be in your life and what's best for you. Because sometimes when we're stuck in ego, we don't, we're not really thinking about what's best for us. It's what our ego is wanting to feel good in the moment. It's like, how can I get that hit? Is it talking to a person? Is it going and drinking? Is it <laughs> like even just blaming my job for the way I feel every day? Like, you know, it, it can be anything running through your mind with these stories. Or every time you meet somebody new, you tell them the same damn story about yourself. And it's not something you want to be anymore. So why are you still telling that story? You have the capability to tell a different story, but you have to rewire your brain in the way that you're thinking about who you are, right? So if you want to be something different than what you are right now, if you want to um, come into the energy of a better version of you, well, then you have to make different moves because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to keep getting the same results over and over again. And you're going to loop in these cycles, in these stories, in these programs that you were born into and taught, right, in our society, in our culture. Oh, I have to make so much money. This is what success looks like. I have to have, you know, a white picket fence and and my kids have to be the best at sports or whatever it is. It's like programs, programs, programs. It's not present moment style at all. It's straight busy, 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 busy. My mind's going, my mind's going, my ego's going. I'm in the matrix. I got to stay on the hamster wheel. You're so caught up and distracted in things that don't serve you that you don't even have a chance to think about doing it a different way. I've always done it this way. This is how my parents have always done it. This is how society does it. This is what you do. Well, I'm here to tell you that there is no box to fit in. And if you're trying to fit into a box, it's this never ending looping cycle of thinking that you're pursuing something that's going to make you feel better, but coming up empty at the end. 
Imagine working your whole life, grinding, hustling, right? Because that's what you were told to do. And then you achieve this goal. Maybe you became a doctor, right? And then you waste your life away and you don't even enjoy it. And you just did it because you wanted that, that label of being a doctor, right? <laughs> like, I kind of went through this in college because I just kept going to school. So I finished my bachelor's degree and then I just kept going to school. Not because I was like, I really want to be whatever X, Y, Z. It was because I wanted the degree to prove that I could do it. Like what? I was that overachiever, right? I went and played basketball in college. I went and I got the degrees. I to this day have not actually now I'm finally going to teach, but, um, I haven't even used my degree. I'm like 35 years old. <laughs> like, for what? No one gives a shit but you. And turns out you didn't give a shit either. Like I didn't even care. Like it, it doesn't even matter. I don't even tell people that I have it. You know what I mean? I'm telling you right now to use that as an example. But I don't. I used to when I was an ego before my spiritual awakening. I'd be like, this is what I've achieved. <laughs> Pat me on the back, right? We all go through that, especially perfectionists and overachievers. That is like the way they feel validated. A lot of people who are like, this is another thing. If you're an athlete, and I went through this too, most athletes who really excel and make it at least into college, they are so clung to their identity of being a baseball player, of being a basketball player, of being a volleyball player, whatever whatever it is. Um, and then they uh, cling to that identity but if they were to be stripped of it, and you've seen this too, people go to play professional sports and then they are gone, then they end up, you know, you don't can't play forever. And when they're done, they're lost. They go bankrupt. They, you know, <laughs> make poor decisions. And that's because their whole identity was based off something that got stripped away from them. And then what? Ego death, right? And that's what happens when you start a spiritual awakening. That's just one example. But everything gets stripped away from you. I mean, that just literally happened to me. Even through in my spiritual awakening, I, I met a partner who was on their awakening journey, right? We literally manifested everything, acres of land, a house, the, everything you could have wanted. And it gets taken away from you. Why? Because if you're not ready... And it might not even be what is of your highest good, right? But if it gets taken away from you, that means it wasn't for you, for one. And for two, it's a lesson. It's a lesson for you. And there's a huge gift in it if you can take the gift and stop clinging and just let go. And be like, damn, like I know if this blew up in my face, this thing that I manifested and worked so hard for, it's because it's trying, it's the universe trying to show me something. It's trying to give me this gift if I'm willing to open up and see it. Because if something falls away, it's because there's something better to replace it. And only you know what that is. And really trying to predict the future is a big fat waste of time. Trying to control the future is a big fat waste of time. Presence is where it's at. And how do we get present? We let go of wanting to try to say this is what is gonna happen for me. What's happening for you today? What do you wanna dive into today? And I notice a lot when people do try to predict the future, control the future, or get too planny, like try to freaking plan everything, that's gonna fall on your face too, by the way. When you do try to do that, um, it's usually, first of all, it's your ego trying to control. So whatever it's being created, is being created inadvertently by your ego. So even in my relationship dynamic, I'll use that as an example, even though we manifested and created this thing, I still saw the holes in it, right? I still saw a hole in the location of where the property was. I was like, oh, once I got there, I noticed all the holes. I was like, this isn't it. I kind of started getting that feeling. Then I started seeing that reflecting even more in my relationship and I was like, whoa, but it was really hard to let go. Why? Because you love the person, right? <laughs> you love the person. You love this fairy tale that you 
created that happily ever after type thing. And that's okay, but now it's time to learn the lesson. Now it's time to let go. Now it's time to step into your power and start creating. So Spirit woke me up this morning at quarter after four with a download. And I'm about to read it to you guys, but um, it just let me know how much A, the full moon energies are still lingering in the field. And B, how a lot of us are still struggling with being able to get a grip on our mind and our action in terms of projecting based off of the emotions that are coming up. Because a lot of us are like, okay, we got to that point where we're not like outwardly projecting onto the external, people in our external about, you know, our emotional issues. Some of us still are, that's okay. We all, we all have our little moments where we pop out of alignment and we, and then we're like, wait, check yourself so you don't wreck yourself, pop back into alignment. And that's, that's fine. But what we really need to do is get a hold on these thoughts. These thoughts are running, guys, and that's still projecting out into the field. And I think that's the major um, message that Spirit wanted to get through today. But I'm going to read this because I think it's important. And um, then I'll give you some thoughts on it. All right. So Spirit, <laughs> obviously, I always come through with the automatic writing. So it started out with just a thought I had and then Spirit came flowing. And I was thinking that one person who sees, let me start over. <laughs> that one person who everyone sees as a genius, but is also still heavily in their shadow. So this reminds me of a lot of people where the people in the matrix, in the external, look at that person like, dang, they are really smart. But then they see their external reality where they are struggling, right? And they're like, but at the same time, how come their world falls apart around them, right? So this is basically the light worker before they start integrating, okay? So they can't quite figure him out, the people in the matrix. He's on to something, but his life shows he's not on to something on the material plane. This is an unintegrated person. He knows how to do it, but he doesn't want to or feel stuck. It's a self-love deficit, lacking to believe that you can. The tricky part is your ego tells you that you are a genius, but you're just a victim to life, a victim to your circumstances. Truth be told, you're only a victim to your own ego mind and stories you play on repeat. The trauma that bubbles up from the past becomes your identity. The only way out is in. You don't escape by reaching outside of yourself. You address it by going within yourself, feeling all of those feelings, addressing them and telling them a new story. A story that doesn't make you some kind of victim to life, but the active creator of your reality. So for me, in, as an individual that I experienced on this recent blue moon, which is why I just did my nails in the blue, because <laughs> I'm still feeling it. I was like, I'm doing blue. But for me, it's been the thought projections. So I keep going. I did a little mugwort tea, which enhances your lucid dreaming for the past two nights. I did it on the full moon and then I had some left over. I didn't want to drink too much of it because it's a diuretic. So you'll pee a lot <laughs> if you drink too much mugwort. So what you do is you boil it down till it gets really dark and there's about this much left in the bottom of the pan. And then you do a really potent dose. I'd put some honey in there if I was you, <laughs> if you're interested in it. And I'd also look it up online because some people are allergic to certain herbs and stuff. So, but anyways, in my dreams, it's like no matter how much on the physical reality, I can sit here and control my projections. My trauma comes up in my dreams big time. And so the past two nights, it was nice that I took that tea because it helps with your dream recall. It does for me anyways. It helps with lucid dreaming and dream recall. I did not have lucid dreams, but I was able to recall my dreams like far into the day where normally as soon as I wake up, they're gone. Like I'm losing them. If I don't wake up and type it in my little dream journal, it's gone. But um, yeah, so all this trauma is coming up in my dreams. 
I have dreams all the time of being treated like crap by people who are supposed to love me, <laughs> right? All the time. But um, not all the time, but like when I'm going through purging periods, they'll come up day, night after night. So the past two nights, um, I had kind of like weird dreams, but it was the emotions coming up. It was that. And then I would continue to wake up feeling resentful, thinking of every little fucking thing that I'm resentful for about people like not treating me right or being in relationships where I'm not treated right. And it's just like, and the amount of effort, like efforting that my ego puts in trying to prove that I should be treated right because I'm treating others right instead of walking away. Right. So that was the whole loop that I'm going through. That's the loop I'm going through. It's a loop a lot of divine feminines are going through right now. Um, which is probably why it's coming up. That's why the downloads are coming through. And the loop is me projecting in my mental thoughts. So I'm not projecting on the external, but my thoughts are completely just running. I'm doing laundry. The thoughts are running. I'm doing the dishes. The thoughts are running. And, and you really have to get a hold on those. And so <laughs> it's challenging. It really is. It is a mind over matter thing. It is a like, look, I have to consciously, intentionally say, I'm rewiring my thoughts about this. I'm projecting love into the field. Those who I resent, I am changing my mind about the way I'm going to think about them. If I have to write it on paper and write it, all the affirmations down or whatever prayer I want to send out to them um, down, do it. If it's that hard, you have to write it down and repeat it. For me, I've just been like sitting with intention and saying out loud how I feel or even sending good thoughts and vibes to whatever this situation I was throwing shade at and feeling a victim to. It is a practice. It really is. And, and it's this... Um, this is what keeps us stuck. This like feeling like a victim to life. A lot of light workers go through it because we have been through so much shit in order to be able to go through the ascension process before everyone else so we can help them. And it's not it's not easy. I go through it every single day. I have really great days for for the most part, but it I have those points where I'm like Going through a thought pattern, feeling emotions coming up, right? We all do. So basically what Spirit's coming through with today is um, how can we get a hold on our thought projections? How can we become unstuck to that mentality and that story we're telling about why we are a victim to life? What are the things that are coming up? Write them down. Write them down and then start writing a different story. So right on the top of the paper, right? Uh, this is the, this is the loop I'm going through. This is uh, what the thoughts I'm thinking about this person. This is the thoughts I'm thinking about how pissed I am about the job I have, how resentful I am to the universe because I have this job that I hate and it doesn't pay me enough, or I have to work too much or it's hard on my body, right? We could go whatever it is for you. You know what it is for you pinpoint what that is and start chipping away at it. Writing is going to help. Now I can sometimes sit and tell that different story in my head. I can go and tell a bunch of different stories that are all better than the one I've been telling. Come up with five different timelines that are like more positive on this, on the front of what you're dealing with. This is going to help guys. But yeah, that's what spirit came through with today. I really, really, really hope you guys can get a hold on all of these projections that are coming up with the emotions after this full moon. Because it is, it's for everybody. <laughs> I haven't seen one person that's skating through this smooth sailing through this. Not uh, people, light workers online that are have YouTube channels. I haven't seen not one person say, I'm having a decent time through this. 
every single person is like, people are struggling right now. Okay. So let's hold space for each other and let's really, um, do that inner work. Cause that's how we help each other by raising our own frequency, by being willing to step into a, a different space and out of fear into a space that's of the highest good of you, which in turn is of the highest good of all. Because when you're on track and you're on mission, you're that little cell in the body that's working together with all the other little cells as a cohesive unit to keep a healthy uh, body together to be able to function in the highest of ways. We are, all of us are the little cells and we have to work together to be able to have that healthy body, Gaia, all of us as one, the universe in itself. We are an aspect of the universe. And you'd be surprised what one little cell can do. But if we all came together, it's like, whoa, right? I love you guys. <laughs> Please hang in there. I know, I know. If you want to share anything in the um, comments, um, please feel free. Feel free to open up chat or or share any of your experiences. Or if you have any questions or anything that you suggest for me to talk about, um, I'm open to any of that. But all right, guys, I love you. Have an amazing mess, uh, rest of your day. And please take care of yourselves and take care of your thoughts.